Hi. Uh, thank you for the passionate presentation. Uh, is it working? Hello. Uh, thanks, Naomi, for a passionate uh, presentation of mine. Uh, as she mentioned, I am a co-founder of a youth movement called OL, which means uh, B in English. And the slogans we have are uh, be liberal, be open to new ideas, be open for change, be open, uh, be democratic, be tolerant. And uh, if the, uh, and, 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 yeah, exactly, that one. Sound or no sound? With sound, with sound. And now let's uh, take some time and, and watch the introductory video of all youth movement. And we will proceed after that. You can make a lot of mistakes when you're young, so <laughs> excuse the mistakes that you're making here now. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a, one of the advantages that new social media is providing us. And we used this, uh, this tool back in uh, 2008 in order to prepare this short video, but a very expressive one. 
in order to present ourselves and present the ideas and the values of group of people from Azerbaijan to our friends in the world and also to our local uh, young people. Uh, yesterday I listened to, to a lot of stories that were out there from Cuba, from Venezuela, from China and from other uh, repressive regimes. Uh, I do not really have a personal story as such to share with you guys. But I have some, uh, some internal story that uh, I like to share with you. Seems like the freedom is becoming very expensive, as Geneva is. And, uh, and this is, um, and, if it's, and if it's expensive, it means that you have to identify your resources gain some more resources in, in, in order to buy this freedom eventually. And of course it takes a lot of struggling, it takes a lot of fighting, it takes a lot of young enthusiasm, young passion, young uh, belief, fresh belief in your thoughts, in your values. I grew up in a very conservative family. And also my extended family members were also very conservative with some traditional rules and plus some uh, Islamic elements in that. So in my family, I wouldn't say that we had uh, pluralism. I wouldn't say that my parents would uh, tolerate every single criticism or different behavior of their kids in our family. I was reading the ideas about democracy, tolerance, human rights from books. And it was back in high school. Everything changed until I, went to, until I went to the United States. I stayed there with an American family. I uh, made a lot of friends. I attended the American high school system, which is built on students, which, uh, in which the students are very active in school process, in educational process. I engaged in family activities which I found uh, were, were very democratic. Husband and wife were respecting each other. They didn't have any uh, gender problems, any uh, women's rights discriminations in the family. And the little kids that were there, they will be very much listened to. And their opinion, no matter how little they are, would always be, in, would always be uh, taken into account. So I saw this liberal environment, I saw a liberal church environment, I saw a liberal uh, society in which people actually are respecting uh, different views, different thoughts. Of course, at church it was a, in a different picture, but I generally had an opportunity to practice, to challenge the ideas of democracy, the values of democracy, which I saw in books in a real life. And I realized one thing that uh, reading something is very different actually from living what you read in a real life. And that brought a lot of, and that brought a big difference to my life. That was painful, but I believe freedom is pain when you gain it. But once you gain the freedom, and once you internally solved your own problems, this is easier to put this into practice. It was easier to put this into practice in the States because the society in general is very free one. And in a free environment, you are able to uh, behave freely uh, in a more convenient way. Then I came back to Azerbaijan. I came back to Azerbaijan, I saw that, no. In order for me to be able to practice my freedom, my individual rights, I need also to bring a difference to others' lives. Be able to uh, play a positive role in others' lives as well. So I and group of friends that I got, we uh, thought of founding an organization. Organization which is less structured, organization which is based more on values, and which is very inclusive, including different views, different uh, people of different backgrounds, uh, mainly the students, and plus the students who were educated abroad. So we created this OL Youth Movement which is a, a kind of turned into an idea. 
Then, and let me give you a brief background of the uh, youth organizations that were out there in Azerbaijan and how they emerged. In beginning of the 2000s, uh, a lot of youth organizations emerged in Azerbaijan. Most of them were political party affiliated. And after the 2003 presidential elections and after the 2005 presidential elections, uh, when the uh, political parties were not very successful in political stage, this party affiliated youth organizations disappeared because their ideology and their resources were very much related to politics. Only one organization uh, survived. In 2005, a new wave of youth organizations, of youth initiatives, started in Azerbaijan. Uh, so-called alumni network emerged. Alumni network was a very chaotic, uh, very inclusive, a very open network which will embrace a lot of young people of different backgrounds in Azerbaijan and create a space for discussion, for deliberations, discuss different philosophical theories, discuss different problems that, that out there in economy, in, in public policy, in politics, in youth sphere, in education. And we had that space there. In 2006, this movement emerged, the, the, ones that we, the ones that we founded. And since that time, this movement and, and other youth organizations and, and also one youth organization, uh, members which are good friends of mine, uh, Irali, which is uh, labeled as a pro-governmental youth movement in Azerbaijan, they also emerged with, with a lot of resources, with, uh, with a lot of uh, also human resources, with a lot of people in their actually, uh, involved in their activities. So we had all these different youth organizations, youth movements that were representing different backgrounds, different thoughts. And this is ultimately what we wanted after this post-2005 period in, order in Azerbaijan to emerge. And the bloggers among these youth leaders became very popular. And two bloggers, which were very active in uh, advocating uh, human rights, in uh, advocating the, the democratic values, they got stopped in 2008. And they got in jail. And that uh, shake in youth sector of Azerbaijan, it uh, brought a different picture to civil society uh, stage of Azerbaijan. And the discourse after this arrest was mainly built on the arrest of bloggers, externally and internally. Externally, of course, our youth movement and the organizations that were out there, they became more popular. Everybody in the world, all the main uh, media, uh, media corporations, they wrote about this arrest. They uh, condemned their violations, the, the, the human rights violations that were out there. We became popular, but internally, a lot of people were chased, uh, were scared off. So, I don't want to talk more about the problems. Now, I want to introduce my own uh, perspective, my own idea, what should be done from now on. And yesterday at the presentations, Many people spoke about the past and about what's happening now, but nobody really brought into the, uh, into the picture what, what I, I was actually, as a young person, expecting. What should be done from now on? What kind of concept, what kind of solution do you guys have in order to uh, introduce to, uh, to your young people and also to your people in your countries? I will call the concept that I am now going to speak about supermarket society. I know it kind of sounds very, very economic and, and very uh, shopping oriented theory, but actually I believe that the ideas need to be subject for shopping. The ideas of different backgrounds, of different characters need to be available out in the public 
in order for people, for young persons, for uh, NGO leaders, for political party leaders, for people in government, and for people uh, who are in their deep ends of their hearts are with us, but, don't, but not acting, but not supporting us, in order to be able to buy these ideas in this supermarket. A lot of initiatives of different kinds, let's say uh, uh, bloggers can be a one, uh, should be a one uh, direction. Let's say there are doctors who are not happy with their lives in Azerbaijan, who face severe economic problems. They should also uh, kind of like networkize among themselves, network among themselves, create a group which is advocating the doctor's rights, then the bloggers should create their own union, photographers should create their own union, in order to be able to uh, offer different products to different group of people who are out there in Azerbaijan right now. We realize that the social change, social transformation, doesn't matter how you call it, which is uh, ultimately going to happen should not discriminate people, should not chase people off. It should more include people. And uh, in this regard, I look at people, at some people in government, and also at the youth organizations that were created by, uh, by uh, resources, administrative resources of government, or by their incentives. I look at them as partners. And we should be able to engage in dialogue. We should be able to meet, to talk, to discuss, and see what kind of opportunities we can offer to young people in Azerbaijan. Two main groups I believe that is worth in investing. One are the bloggers. I, I, I am also a blogger, and I named my blog Perestroika. So uh, it's a new wave of perestroika, I believe, in Azerbaijan that the bloggers are initiating. And I would like to encourage uh, uh, all of you here to follow the blogs that are in Azerbaijan, especially the ones that are being written in English. The bloggers are emerging power right now in Azerbaijan. There are a lot of bloggers in Azerbaijan that write about social things, social issues, about youth, about civil society, about politics, that are worth investing in. So if you have, you know, you're presenting different NGOs here. If, if, if any of your NGOs have any uh, particular field or something to offer to bloggers from a Caucasus region, I would very much uh, encourage you in order to invite those people to your, uh, to your events because it's worth to provide them also with some acknowledgement and also with some incentive. You know, we young people like when people praise us, you know. That's why uh, it's great if, if some of you will invite us and we will have a floor for, for discussion. Another group in this supermarket that I introduced are women. In Azerbaijan, men historically and traditionally have received everything for granted. That's why we, we've always had these comfortable hot spots, saying that nobody can really question our status. And we are the ones that will never be removed from this position. Subconsciously, women in Azerbaijan have always had this drive that no, we are in competition with men, and we need to prove ourselves. We need to pr prove that we are more intellectual, that we can do better in business, that we can uh, play an active role in society. So they have this drive, and now they're emerging power. Example, when I was in university, the girls were more responsible. They were doing well in their classes more than, than the guys would do. They were more punctual. They were more participating. They were more protesting. They were more speaking about things, even, even, even though there, was, there were some things that would be politically incorrect but the girls still, with their passion, with their emotions, would talk about those things. So gender rights uh, protecting organizations in Azerbaijan are also the ones that are worth investing in. 
third uh, group of uh, people or a product in this supermarket society are alumni educated abroad. We have a great number of people who are currently either studying in the United States, in UK, in Europe, in Russia, in Turkey, in China, in Japan. And also we have a group of a lot of students that who already graduated from those universities and came back to Azerbaijan. And of course, if they studied in a certain country for two years, for a year or four years, uh, getting their BA, it means that they gain some alternative thoughts, some alternative ideas on democracy, on freedom. Again, I believe that democracy is freedom. Demo I, I, I will wrap up, don't worry. Democracy is freedom um, are something that uh, if you are from a society which was autocratic, traditional, and in which you have administrative and traditional uh, obstacles for doing your activities, it's pain to transform, to change yourself. And, that's, and that pain adds a value to that. Because you have gone through pain, you've gained that freedom, you've gained that democracy, it means that you will protect it. You are not going to compromise this to any kind of structure. So these alumni are these people that were educated there, and then they also can be uh, invested in. Another fourth, it's wrapping up. Uh, in Azerbaijan, in this supermarket society concept, I came up with a, uh, with a terminology called greenification. By greenification, I put emphasis on being green, on making the economies more green, on keeping the climate change issue on our agenda as younger generation of these people. Because if we are changing our value structure, if we're changing, if we are transforming our intellectual uh, basis, this is also important to keep greenification, the ideas of being green, of keeping the climate, our environment clean, on that agenda as well. So let's be green. Another, uh, uh, another um, notion that I want to, uh, it's actually a request to politicians who are uh, in Azerbaijan and in, in Europe, in the United States. Uh, let's untie our politics. Let's get off these ties that you guys are wearing. And also to young people, I get so irritated when I see a young person wearing a tie. Because tie is symbolically squeezing, choking you. And it's blocking the channel for ideas to go and back and forth, you know. And also this is isolating. Isolating you guys from uh, people, from local persons. So let's untie our politics. And you can maybe name this untieification of politics. You know, and there are a group of friends of mine from Europe that who are going to run for parliamentary elections, hopefully. Like, I would also like to encourage them to hold their campaigns without ties, to be closer to people, to talk to people, to communicate with them, and do not forget about the minorities, and also about the people that are around Europe, EU, countries as Azerbaijan, Georgia, Armenia, Ukraine, Russia, Central Asia, this freedom train which went from Western Europe to Eastern Europe at the end of 1980s, it stopped in Soviet Union. Now there is a need again to put some engine on this freedom train, again start this working and sending it over to Caucasus and from Caucasus to Central Asia, to Middle East. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, can we show the last video please? It will be a conclusion and it's a short one. And this video is called, it's also made uh, by all Azerbaijan youth movement. It's called Democracy is Possible. And hopefully you guys will, uh, will enjoy that video. This video is for people who think that democracy is impossible. Government doesn't do anything for democracy. People don't know what democracy is and which benefits it gives. Is that why you do not believe in positive changes? 
But you know that only in democratic society you will have tools to solve your problems. Good. There is a way that will change your point of view. You will start taking little steps towards big changes. What is revolution? There is a different way for revolution. A way that takes to democracy. So let's start with E. Education. Educate your society. People should understand what democratic values are and what they will gain from democracy. V. Volunteering. Find time to help people. Work with your community. Meet and spread the ideas you believe in. O. Optimism. Democracy may be just a dream in your reality, but you should be optimistic. Optimism will never let you give up. L. Love. Forget about hate. Do not hate people who want to stop you. Tolerance is one of the main principles of democracy. U. Unity. Unite people with different backgrounds and views. Males, females, students, professionals. Your ideas should be clear for everybody. T. Trust. Win the trust of people. Without trust, people will not follow ideas and beliefs which you share. I. Integrity. Do not lie to people. People get fed up with lies. That is why they want change. O. No. Organization. Organize and gather people who share the same values. N. Nonviolence. Violence is a tool for weak people. Your ideas are strong, so you don't need violence. Now you have evolution. The last element is R. Realization. Realize your evolution. Revolutionize your minds. You will see that democracy is possible. Just think and start to act.